Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. So today we will continue our lesson on engineering mechanics chapter 2 which is all related to the force vector. But before we proceed with the today's lesson, so let us recap what we have learned last week. So first, last week you have learned about scalars and vectors and the differences between scalars and vectors. Next, you have been taught about multiplication and division of a vector by a scalar, right? So your arrow will represent your magnitude and direction of your scalar. Right, so next you are learning about the vector operation, magnitude and directions, alright? So as you can see here, so if vector, N, vector A and vector B, it is, has the same direction but it has different magnitude, so it is not equal. So if A and B, vector A and vector B has uh, the same magnitude but different direction, it is not similar. But if both vector A and vector B has the same magnitude and the same direction, it means that vector A equals to vector B. Alright, next we have learned about addition. So, in order for you to perform the vector addition, you need to draw the um, parallel lines between vector A and also parallel line between vector B. Okay, and then the intersection line is uh, the resultant force that you will find. Okay. So next is the special case. So if your force vectors, if you wanted to add or substitute your force vectors, okay, if uh, each force vector, if the head of the first force vectors touch with the tails of the second force vectors, it means that you can use triangle rule to find the resultant force. Okay. All right. So this case is similar with subtraction. So you can see here for parallelogram law, okay, if the tail of the first force, which is the force A, touch with the tail of the second force, which is the force B, the resultant force will be um, produced by using parallelogram law, okay. But if the head of the first force vectors touch the tail of the second force vectors, it means that you can use the triangle law, all right. So this is what you have learned last week. So this week, you will learn about how to find a resultant force, alright? So let's say you have the force F1 and the force F2, okay? So as you can see here, force F1 and force F2, uh, the tails touch each other. So it means that you need to use a parallelogram law to find the resultant force, alright? So to find the parallelogram law, so you need to construct like a, a, a parallel line between for F1 and parallel line for F2. Okay, so the parallel line must start at the head of the force. Okay, so you see here, this is the force one. The head at the, it started at the, the at the head of the force one. You need to construct the parallel line of the force F2, similar to the head of F2. You need to create a parallel line of F1 which is starts from the head of uh, vector F2, alright? And the intersection line here, you can, uh, you need to construct like a additional vector here, which is the resultant force. So resultant force is actually the cumulative force that is the output, which is from your addition or your subtraction or any other um, vector operation, alright? Okay. So in order for you to find the resultant force, you can use the law of sines or law of cosines to the triangle to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force, all right? So after you find the parallelogram shape of your force, okay? You can use the uh, you can convert the parallelogram into the triangle shape because this line, okay, is parallel to F2. So it means that you can put F2 here, alright? So when you put F2 here, it will become a triangle. F1, F2, and the resultant force. Okay? So from here, you can find your resultant force by using law of sines or law of cosines. Alright? So this is the example of the vector addition of forces finding a component of a force, alright? So let's say, 
you have a resultant force F here, alright? And your resultant force F um, move along the uh, axis of V and U, okay? So in order for you to construct the uh, forces V and forces U, okay, you must start with the head of the resultant force, okay? The head of the resultant force, and then you draw the uh, parallel line of V, which is indicated here, and then parallel line of U, which is indicated here, okay? And then you can draw the force which starts from the origin here until the intersection here, intersection of the parallelogram that you have been drawn previously, okay? Similar to here for FU, force U, all right? And then from this parallelogram shape, you can convert it into a triangle by replacing FB here into here because this is a parallel, parallel line. So it means that the force here is similar to the force here, all right? So from this triangle, you can apply law of sines to find the magnitude of the resultant force F, all right? Okay, so this is the resultant force F, and this is law of uh, the triangle's law, law of cosine or law of sine, okay? So from here, you can uh, substitute the value of F, FV, and FU, okay? In order for you to find the resultant force. For example, if you wanted to find C, C equals to the square root of A square plus B square minus 2AB cos C, all right? And the sine law, A over sine A equals to B over sine B equals to C over sine C. So from these equations or from this formulation, you can find the resultant force and also the direction. So the direction here is uh, representing the orientation or the angle that you wanted to find. All right. Okay. Next situation is uh, the addition of several forces. So what? are the result resultant force if you have multiple forces, okay? So in this situation, you have three force. You have force one, you have force two, and you have force three. So what you should do is you should solve uh, one by one. So it means that you must do the two uh, addition of forces first, okay? For example, F1 plus F2. And then this is the resultant force of F1 plus F2. And then F1 plus F2, you will be adding with F3. Okay, and then you will find the resultant force of FR. Okay, so in order for you to find the uh, resultant force, you need to you need to um, add the two component of force first, and then the what do you call the product of the addition, you will be adding to the next force. Okay, all right. So if you have multiple forces, what you should do is you should add each, uh, in each operation, you need to add only two forces, all right? And the product of the two forces, you will be add in the next step, okay? So each uh, part of the calculation must only consist of two element of forces, all right? Okay, so next is step-by-step -step example. So this question asks you to determine the magnitude and direction of resultant of the forces shown. So in order for you to find the resultant forces, what you should do? So based on our previous lesson, this is actually tails meet with tails. So what you should do is you should use the parallelogram law. Okay. So construct a parallelogram by drawing two lines. Each line starts at the tip of one vector and is parallel to the other vector. So the first uh, things that you need to do is you need to draw a parallel line in order for you to construct a parallelogram. Okay, parallel and parallelogram. So those things are, you know, related somehow, the name. All right. Okay. So this is the force that you, uh, that, that, that has been given. Okay. So you draw the parallel line which, which starts from the tip or the head of the the first force, you draw the parallel line of uh, this force, 200 Newton force. And then the other, you, you need to draw from the tip. And then you draw the parallel line here, which is parallel to this line. Alright? 
Okay, so from this line, okay, you will have, uh, it has been given here, the angle of 30 degree. Okay, so the angle of 30 degree, the 30 degree is the angle between the 105, 150 Newton force here and also 200 Newton force here. So 30 degree here will also similar to here, 30 degree because the line is parallel. So the angle must be similar. Alright, so the second step is since opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal in length, so the length of each line represents the magnitude of the vector opposite. Okay, so as you can see here, the length here, 200 Newton, it is equal to here. This is also 200 Newton because the length and also the angle of each um, parallel line is similar. Okay, so when uh, you you are drawing the parallelogram shape, so the parallel line between each uh, segment is similar in magnitude. All right, so this is two hundred newton and this is also two hundred newton. Similar to here, this is one hundred and fifty newton and this is also one hundred and fifty newton here. All right, so the next step is so the resultant R, which is the resultant force is drawn from the tails of the vectors to the opposite vertex of the parallelogram. So based on our previous lesson, if we are using the parallelogram law, okay, after we are drawing the parallel lines, okay, the part where the line, um, what do we call the line intersects, which is here, is the resultant force. Okay, So it must start with the where the uh, the tails are okay and you must connect it to the intersection line of your parallelogram so the parallel line that you have drawn before okay so this is the resultant force all right so this is uh, not the resultant force because it is not drawn from the intersection of the tails okay so when you see here this line is not the resultant force because it is not drawn from the tails intersection here okay so it must drawn from the tails here to the intersection line where you are newly drawn your parallelogram okay so this is actually your resultant force okay which is the intersection line all right so from this parallelogram law okay as you can see you can convert it into triangle all right by uh, using this parallel line here that you have drawn 150 newton and this is 200 newton and this is the resultant force r and you have the degree here 30 degree that has been given right from this parallelogram you can convert it into a rectangle i'm sorry into a triangle all right so in order for you to find the resultant force r you can use the sine or cosine rule which is um here you are already given 30 degree here. So you can use the cosine law. Alright. Okay. So for this uh, tutorial, we will do uh, some questions. Okay. In our next class. Okay. In the next class. Alright. So you will be given some of the example and we will do our tutorial session together. Alright. So next is the addition of a system of coplanar forces, scalar notation. So previous lesson, um, the previous lesson, we, will, we are calculating the resultant force without any plane. Okay? So if it has a plane, it must be specified. But this time, the plane is uh, it's like a fixed plane. Okay? So it means that um, you can represent your forces in two types okay all right so rectangular components is where force is resolved into two components along x and y axis so in this section each force will be uh, divided into two axis x axis and y axis okay but previously it doesn't mention any axis so you um, are finding the resultant force in general but this time you have some exist all right so um if uh, the force have an exist so you can represent using two methods using scalar or using cartesian vectors 
Alright? So, this is the example of using a scalar notation. Alright? So, you can see here, here you can see you have the resultant force F here. And then you have the Y axis and X axis. Okay? Therefore, you have the force of Y, which is uh, directly connected to the Y axis. And you have force X, which is directly connected to the X axis. Okay? So, by using the parallelogram law, the resultant force F can be defined as Fx here, okay, plus Fy prime, because this is Fy. And if we wanted to create a triangle, we must use this one, Fy prime. So, because Fy prime is parallel to Fy, so the magnitude is similar, okay? So, you can use the parallelogram law here. Right, so in order for you to find the Fx, which is the force um, with respect to x axis, you need the formula is F, which is the resultant force, cos theta. So this is the theta here. All right, and the forces of y, which is the force um, with respect to y axis, okay, it is equals to the resultant force F sine theta here. Okay, right, or you can use a small slope triangle. Okay, so if you are using the small slope triangle, Fx, okay, which is the force with respect to x axis, equals to B over C multiplied by the resultant force. Okay, or Y or the Fy, uh, the force of uh, with, with respect to the y axis, equals to negative A over C multiplied by F, the resultant force, alright? So this is the way if you wanted to represent your force by using scalar vector, alright? But what about Cartesian vector? So, if you wanted to um, represent your addition of a system of coplanar forces by using Cartesian, so X and Y component represented in unit vector I and J. So, in Cartesian vector, you will have a component of I, which is represent the X axis, and J, which is represent your Y axis, alright? So, this is the example of the addition of a system by using coplanar force resultants, okay? So, you can see here, you have F1Y here and F1X here, and this is F1, okay? Your resultant force F1. So, F1 equals to F1X Okay, for X, we have I plus F1Y. For Y, you have J. Okay, so each component of X must have the letter I. And each component of the force Y, with, with respect to the Y axis, must have the component of J. Okay, so later on, we will uh, try some of the example in order for you to improve your understanding of representing your uh, system of forces by using scalar or um, Cartesian, all right? Cartesian form, all right? So for Cartesian form, okay, and also the for uh, what do we call uh, for the scalar uh, vector notation, okay? If you wanted to find the resultant force with uh, the condition that you already have the total force of with respect to x axis and total uh, force of uh, y axis, okay? This is the resultant force equals to the square root of the square of the total force of uh, with respect to x axis plus the square of the total force of with respect to y axis. Okay, so you can find the resultant force by using this formula. And if you wanted to find the the theta, which is the direction, you can use the tan inverse, the total force of y over the total force of x. Okay, this is the, uh, what do you call the, the magnitude direction, um, the magnitude notation. It means that it is always positive. Okay. Alright. So, I think that's all for today's class. Okay. Um, I hope that uh, you will be able to get a basic understanding of the force vectors. Okay. So, in the next class, we will do um, some of the example and we will do some of the tutorial and we also uh, will do some of the practices based on the last year 
uh, final exam questions. Okay. So I hope that you are you are able to grab the the fundamental of the force uh, addition, force subtraction, force multiplication, and force divisions. And um, we will meet again next week with uh, we will meet again in our next class with the tutorials. Okay. So I think that's all for today's class. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and thank you.